Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Welcome to Ask Rob and Rob, that reassuring part of your week where you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a couple of questions, a couple of answers, and we'll send you on your way a little bit more knowledgeable roughly eight minutes later. But you don't have to just sit back and passively listen. You can get involved. Rob, how do they do that? Super simple. You can call us on our number, which you can find in the show notes, or you can go to propertyhub.net forward slash ask. And you can leave us a message that way. Really easy. Of course it is, because we've done hundreds of these, and you've all managed to get your heads around it. And to join that wonderful group of people, we have a question in from Matt. Hi, Rob and Rob. Matt here. I started listening to the podcast last year, and I found some words stand out to me. Very authentic and very honest. So thank you very much for that. I feel a lot more confident about what's going on in the UK market, because beforehand I just watched American YouTubers, so I knew more about what was going on there than what's going on here. To be honest, I bought property a couple of years ago and have recently remortgaged to pull out quite a bit of money to buy my first buy to let. I'm struggling to find deals at the moment, to be honest. And when I run the numbers, even on some properties that are below reduced price, they don't really make sense for me for rental yield. My target is really three bed properties in my area in Gloucester with an interest only mortgage. And I focus on freehold. I've rarely looked at leasehold properties and always try to avoid them. Is it something that can be quite lucrative or should I write it off? What do you think with leasehold properties? If the lease is longer than my lifespan, is it something I should be too worried about? Matt, thank you so much for listening. And you know, you don't have to restrict yourself to the American YouTubers. We've got a YouTube channel as well. Just search Property Hub and you'll find us. As for your question, a couple of points on this. So the first reason you might be struggling is that Gloucester is an expensive area. It might just be that for what you're looking for, for your objectives, that area doesn't work. You need to go further afield. It's not something that's necessarily the case, but it is something that we talk about a lot on this show. Nevertheless, if you are trying to make it work locally, it probably doesn't make sense to cut yourself off from a large number of potential properties, which is effectively what you're doing by just writing off leasehold. So I'm glad you've asked the question. There are a couple of different things that people get concerned about with leasehold, and it's up to you whether it's something that you want to be concerned about or not. The first is the one that you've mentioned, which is the length of the lease. And this is a really easy one. The basic rule of thumb is that leases become problematic and more expensive to extend when they drop below 80 years in length. So a really easy way to get around that is to only buy properties that are above 100 years in length, because that way you can own it for 20 years without even having to think about it. The other thing that people get concerned about is the fact that you don't have full control over the property. So you have to pay a service charge and in return for that service charge, common areas get maintained, the roof gets repaired, the internal areas get repainted every so often and so on. And this can be a good thing because it means that all these things get done for you. You don't have to worry about it. Some people see it as a bad thing because you don't know necessarily if you're getting value for money and you don't know if those jobs are going to be done well. People get very passionate about this and you get people saying that they never own a leasehold property and they'll happily tell you lots of terrible stories about things that they've heard happening to other people. I'll just tell you that I've owned freehold and leasehold properties for years and I couldn't particularly choose between one or the other. For every occasional issue you have with leasehold, you have the same with a freehold property where you have to sort it out yourself. So for this one, there's no right answer. If having complete control is really important to you, then you should continue to write off leasehold. But otherwise, bring them into the properties you're considering. And when you're running the numbers, just find out what the service charge is. The agent should be able to tell you and make sure you factor that into your numbers. It also means that you can probably reduce your estimate for how much you're going to have to spend on repairs because many of those repairs and often insurance as well will be covered by the service charge. So put those into your calculations. If the numbers work and the lease is long enough, then I would say there's no reason not to consider it. But it really is up to you, Matt. But at least now you and everyone else knows a little bit more about it. So thank you for your question. Okay, next up, we have a question in from Ed. Hi, Rob and Rob. It's Ed here from Byfleet. been listening to the podcast for probably a year you answered a previous question. Your content is absolutely fantastic. Rob, I've read your first book. I've read your second one. Uh, but I have a question regarding my son. I'm lucky enough to be in the position of being gifted uh, quite a significant property, which I want to use as a springboard to start my property investment portfolio. But I want to get my son involved as well. He's only 20. So I think it will be a good legacy to leave him and for him to be involved with for the future. And as a 20 year old, I just wondered out of all your podcasts, what would be the best three, or you could stretch it to five, that I could get him to listen to just to give him a basic understanding of property investment in an easy to understand format. 
keep up the good work, guys. A fantastic podcast. I've learned a hell of a lot over the year and I will continue listening into the future. Thank you. Ed, thank you for your question. And it's great that you want to get your son involved as well. I love that. Well, we've got you covered. I'm going to give you a link and this will take you to the podcasts that you are looking for. The link that you're after is propertyhub.net forward slash podcast dash welcome. That's propertyhub.net forward slash podcast dash welcome. There, we've got all the podcasts that will get you off to a great start. And we update it occasionally as well. So if we think, oh, you know what? We've recorded something else that works well. Let's drop that in. That's the link that you need. And this obviously is great for anybody who's only started listening to our podcast recently. So the link for one final time is propertyhub.net forward slash podcast dash welcome. And you are welcome to join us on Thursday when we will come back to you with another property podcast. So we can't wait for that. And of course, we'll be back next Tuesday with Ask Rob and Rob. So until then, take care. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 